Hey guys, Mr. Klein here. Chapter 4, Lesson 4, the last lesson in this chapter on rocks covering metamorphic rocks, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and get going. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer these two questions correctly. Number one, how do metamorphic rocks form? And number two, how do types of metamorphic rocks differ? So let's go ahead and get started with your notes. Uh, number one, metamorphic rock formation. Think of metamorphic rocks as cookies. Yes, wonderful, delicious cookies. Cookies don't normally start out as cookies. They can contain flour and sugar and maybe chocolate chips and nuts or whatever you want in a cookie. And these individual rocks, we can think, uh, I'm sorry, these individual ingredients, we can think of them as minerals. And they're put together and they're mixed up and like sediment in a sedimentary rock. And you have cookie dough. Now you could eat cookie dough, which I don't recommend. You can get sick from it with food poisoning, especially with raw eggs. But the cookie dough is cookie dough, but it's not a cookie. And you have to go through some sort of process to make those ingredients turn and change. Some of the physical and chemical properties need to change in order to become cookies. And this process is known as metamorphosis or baking. And essentially metamorphic rocks form when rocks are exposed to high temperature and pressure. Okay, so essentially, if you think of metamorphic rock formation as chocolate chip cookie dough turning into chocolate chip cookies, you kind of got the same idea going on. Now, of course, we don't ha need high pressures in order to create cookies, but it's the same process, changing, uh, changing physical and chemical properties of rocks. Now, most metamorphic rocks form deep within Earth's crust and mantle. The mantle is the layer of the earth below the crust and above the core, which we'll get into later when we talk about plate tectonics and parts of the earth. Okay, most metamorphic rocks are there. Uh, a lot of metamorphic rocks are considered geologically very old. Um, and the map I'm going to show you of uh, metamorphic rocks in Amer uh, North America, a lot of metamorphic rocks cover some of the oldest and most geologically stable areas of the continent. Okay, So metamorphic rocks will bend and form layers during their formation. Okay, Because of the extreme heat and pressure, they'll actually bend. Now if we look at a rock, you feel a rock, you can play around with rocks, how does it bend? You know, it bends like, it bends like, if you look at the picture, uh, at the bottom it looks all curvy and stuff, and how could something hard and solid like a rock bend? Well that's what happens when it's exposed to high enough pressure and temperature because what will happen is it will behave like a plastic, okay? If you've ever played with a plastic zip tie, you see it's kind of straight and stuff, but without a lot of pressure, you can bend it. And the warmer it is, the warmer you heat plastic, the easier it is to bend. Now, plastic materials, unless they're overheated and they actually melt, okay, but metamorphic rocks don't melt, okay, igneous rocks deal with that in the mantle, uh, I'm sorry, magma rather, but metamorphic rocks are put under heat and pressure, but not enough to melt. But plastic materials will bend and fold without melting. And as they form, metamorphic rocks might permanently change shape and folding during a process we call plastic deformation. Okay, plastic means it can bend and fold. Deformation is if something is deformed, it's out of its normal shape. Okay, so you can deform uh, geometric shapes and that means you're changing them from the original form. So plastic deformation is when metamorphic rocks permanently change shape by building and folding through high temperature and pressure. It's important to know. Metamorphic rocks, the process is what we call plastic deformation. Okay, bending and folding of rocks is common during the formation of mountains. Okay, mountain ranges when we talk next chapter on plate tectonics and we talk about the way mountain ranges and stuff form they go through a particular type of plastic deformation, okay? And we'll talk about with the plate tectonics and also there's a specific term for this metamorphism. Okay, so if we look at our map of North America, this is a map of North America, and everything you see in red are locations of metamorphic rocks. Okay, we have some over in the Rocky Mountains, okay? You see them in spots here and there. Uh, here's some in the coastal mountain ranges of California. There's a little bit in the desert and some down bottom California. And if you notice along the coastline and down into El Salvador, Nicaragua, and uh, Honduras, you see 
these right here. You see a little spot in Texas. You see a little bit around Lake Superior and the Great Lakes in Wisconsin right here. There's a little spot okay, somewhere in Iowa. And then you see in the Appalachian Mountains, the Blue Ridge and the Smoky Mountains. But the vast majority of it is in this area which we call the Canadian Shield. The Canadian Shield is a large area of igneous rocks. It's very, very stable. Has not moved in millions upon millions of years. But because in times past and millions and even billions of years ago, uh, these rocks were put under high pressure and high temperature and they bended under plastic deformation and formed metamorphic rocks. Okay, so we see metamorphic rocks in areas where that might have happened recently or in the past. Also, the Appalachian Mountains, just to say that, uh, the Appalachian Mountains are actually older than the Rocky Mountains. And so as a result, kind of like the whole idea with the Canadian Shield that these metamorphic rocks are really old, the mountains in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, the rocks in the Appalachian Mountains are really old also. And erosion and weathering have lowered them over the millions of years. So let's get back to uh, plastic deformation. Let's talk about that. Now the temperature needed to change the rock to a metamorphic rock depends on the composition of the parent rock. Okay. The rock that it was before it was changed through metamorphic rock is what we call the parent rock. So we have a parent rock and then the metamorphic rock. Okay, what it was before, and we'll talk about some different types of metamorphic rocks, what it was before is the parent rock, and what it changes afterward is the metamorphic rock itself. Now, here's a key temperature to know. No rocks will deform unless it's at a minimum an absolute minimum of 150 degrees Celsius for metamorphic rocks to form. No temperature can get below that and you have any sort of plastic deformity, deformation going on. 150 degrees Celsius is roughly 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So in other words, some of the temperatures that you put in your oven, if you go to bake cookies to go with our example at the beginning, uh, that's some of the temperatures needed. But also pressure needs to put into it also. If it gets real hot, it might melt. But putting at higher temperatures keeps the uh, state of matter from changing, from going from a solid to liquid. So the higher the temperature and the higher the pressure, uh, the easier it can bend. Now pressure becomes greater with increased depth in Earth's crust and mantle. The reason, of course, is because there's more stuff sitting on top of it. And there's a chart that we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at that shows you the relationship between pressure on the Earth's surface and depth. At our surface, uh, the pressure is equivalent to one bar. That's the metric measure of pressure. Okay, 14.5 pounds per square inch is equivalent to one bar. Uh, if you listen to the weather and they talk about the barometric pressure, they might talk about nine something, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, that is the barometric pressure in millibars. In other words, one thousandth of a bar. Normally, the average air pressure, the average pressure at sea level is 14.5 pounds per square inch or one bar. So the further we go below the ground, the higher the pressure becomes. And down here at the bottom, if we look at the pressure in kilobars, that means in 1,000 bars, essentially one kilobar is equivalent to 14,500 pounds per square inch or 1,000 times the amount of air pressure you feel at sea level which in St. Mary Parish, only a couple feet above sea level, oftentimes will feel air pressure that's close to that. And whenever we talk about weather and we talk about later on, we talk about later on in school year, especially we get into winter time and high pressure systems move over, we'll look at the air pressure and when it goes over a thousand millibars, that's how you have air pressure that's above the average at sea level. So to summarize what I was just talking about, uh, you need to have high temperature, at least 150 degrees Celsius or around 300 degrees, so an oven-ish oven, oven -ish temperature, and you need high pressure. If you notice, just 10 kilometers below, 10 kilometers below uh, the Earth's surface, we're approaching 4 kilobars. Okay, we're about at 3 kilobars, so that's, you know, almost 45,000 pounds per square inch sitting on top of a rock. At those extreme pressures, normally solids that we think would, would be solid and never move will actually move really easily. And we go down to 100 kilometers, which is past the uh, crust and into the mantle, you're looking at 28 kilobars, which that's hundreds of thousands of pounds per square inch. 
So we're talking about some serious amounts of temperature and serious amounts of pressure going on there. And at those temperatures, that's when those solids start bending, like maybe a twisty tie or a straw or something like that. Okay, so let's actually talk about metamorphic rocks themselves. Metamorphic rocks are based on texture and, of course, their mineral composition. Okay, we classify rocks based on texture and composition. Metamorphic rocks that contain distinct layers with parallel, okay, remember parallel lines in geometry, okay, these two lines never touch. Parallel, flat, or elongated minerals are what we call foliated rocks, okay. Foliated rocks contain distinct layers with parallel, flat, or elongated minerals. Now, those are the ones that have nice and orderly layers. The ones that don't are what we call non-foliated rocks. They're metamorphic rocks that have mineral grains with a random interlocking texture. There are lots of different types of foliated and non-foliated rocks. On the next page, I'm going to do a little activity and show you uh, what the types of parent rocks and what they are in the metamorphic rocks. Now, non-foliated rocks can form in a couple ways. First off is by what we call contact metamorphism. In contact metamorphism, what will happen is you'll have an existing layer of rock. And magma from a vol volcano or something like that might get really close to it. And the heat of the melted rock will provide the temperature needed for the plastic deformation to take place. Okay? At these contacts where the magma will touch a pre-existing rock and get it really hot, Heat and gases from the magma will interact with the surrounding rock, forming the metamorphic rocks. Okay. Now, as I was talking about before, metamorphic rocks are oftentimes associated with mountains. Okay. This is from the other type of metamorphism that occurs on a large scale. Contact metamorphism, it's contact, it's touching, it's local, it's really close. But regional metamorphism, okay, regional, regional, we think about a region as a big area. Regional metamorphism is kind of like contact metamorphism, but on a huge scale. And so what ad happens is when there's a formation of extremely large metamorphic rocks, what will happen is like, for example, the Rocky Mountains. You have two plates uh, pushing in the area, and then you have uplift. Or an even more dramatic example would be in India, whenever we talk about plate tectonics in a couple weeks. Okay, India is running into, is running into Asia. And so the extreme pressure of all these billions of tons of rock and the Earth's crust pushing puts under a lot of pressure, and it's so much pressure that the rocks are bending and they're being pushed up. These mountains, the Himalaya Mountains, including Mount Everest, are metamorphic rocks because of the extreme pressure. And especially whenever you get down below the ground, all the pushing and friction generates heat. And so along with that pressure, you have the chance for plastic uh, deformation to take place. So this process of regional metamorphism creates entire mountain ranges of metamorphic rock. If we were to go to the Himalaya mountains and get this huge machine that would cut straight through the mountain and pull out a core sample, we would see metamorphic rocks all the way through. Okay, so remember, contact metamorphism produces rocks on a local scale. Magma will come in contact with it. It'll heat it. It's, since it's, under, it's magma, it's underneath the ground. It's under high pressure. The temperature and pressure interact. The rock bends and forms like the deformation you see down here at the bottom of the slides. Okay, that's contact metamorphism. But metamorphism on a huge scale, large mountain range, and oftentimes a result is regional metamorphism. Okay, so this might seem a little bit academic and you're not quite understanding it, so let's go ahead and let's try this activity. Okay, like we said, there are two types of metamorphic rocks. There are foliated rocks and there are non-foliated rocks. Okay, there are two types. It's like I said, two types, foliated and non-foliated. And so let's look at these classes of rocks. Within foliated rocks, shale, which is quartz, mica, and clay. That's what you see this right here. Okay. If we put this under heat and pressure, it'll form slate. Okay, you might not understand it, but even when I was a kid, we had chalkboards. Okay, that they wrote on chalk in school. The chalkboards are made of slate. Slate's really smooth. It uh, it'll fracture, and in some cases, depending on the type of slate, will even cleavage into nice small little sheets. Okay, and it's easy to write on. So that's slate. Slate is shale, which is, a, which is a sedimentary rock, 
put under heat and pressure. Now shale can be put under different types of heat and pressure and form a different type of foliated rock, which is phyllite. As you can see right here, here's the bends and here's the twist, okay? So phyllite, when put under heat and pressure, is shale put under, rather, put under heat and pressure to form phyllite. So there you go, phyllite, as you see on the right is the phyllite, and then shale is what it was before. Now, there are various types of rocks, whether sedimentary or igneous, or even some other metamorphic rocks, can with, with mica, can be put in, as you see, here's a sediment layer. You see there's nice and smooth layers. It's put under heat and pressure, and it's formed what we call schist, okay? Schist is a German word. And as you can see, you got the bends and the curves and the things like that, and it includes mica. Now, sedimentary and igneous rocks, generally without mica, okay, uh, can be put under pressure and form what we call gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S, gneiss, -S, okay? Gneiss. As you can see, there's a deformation stuff from the plastic deformation. It's a type of foliated rock. So let's go through them again, okay? So we have nice, we have schist, we have phyllite, and then we have slate, okay? Those are the four types of foliated rocks that we can find. And of course, there are plenty of other ones, but here's four of the big ones. Now, non-foliated rocks don't have these nice, smooth layers. Rather, their crystals lock up. Uh, interlocking kind of like Lego pieces. Quartz is put under heat and pressure and it forms quartzite. Okay, can you see the quartzite? There you go. Okay, so quartz forms quartzite. And finally, we can talk about the chemical sediment, I'm sorry, the biochemical sedimentary rock, a limestone. Okay, so here's a lime, so here's a type of limestone. We put it under heat and pressure and it forms marble. Okay, you've probably heard of marble before. You might have marble countertops at your house or someone's house that you know. Okay, you see the nice lines. That's where it was bent. But with, if we were to look at marble under a microscope, we would find that the crystals and stuff are interlocked into place. They're not evenly laid one on top of the other and bent around uh, under the pressure. So slate, phyllite, sh uh, schist, and nice are four types of foliated metamorphic rocks. Quartzite and marble are non-foliated rocks. Okay, so and as you can see, this is what they were before. Shale can form those other two types, various rocks with or without mica. They can be igneous, they can be metamor they can be sedimentary, or they can even be met other metamorphic rocks which go through the process of metamorphism with heat and pressure. And then of course there's quartz and limestone that form non-foliated rocks. Okay, so by the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer these following questions. First off, how do metamorphic rocks form? Well, metamorphic rocks form due to rocks changing composition uh, due to increased temperature and pressure. So temperature and pressure, remember the deeper you go into the crust, the higher the pressure because there's more pushing on it. Uh, a bar is the metric unit of pressure. It's based on one bar is equal to 14.5 pounds per square inch. A thousand of them equals a kilobar, okay? So one kilobar is equal to 1,000 bars, which is equivalent to 14.5 pounds per square inch, which is the amount of air pressure we feel at about sea level. So this is extreme pressures and extreme temperatures at least 150 degrees Celsius or 302 degrees-ish, which is generally what we'll see in our ovens. Okay, so how do types of metamorphic rocks differ? Well, metamorphic rocks differ based on their texture, whether they have nice and parallel layers, which are foliated, or random alignment layers that are non-foliated. So that's your lesson, chapter four, lesson four, metamorphic rocks. That concludes the chapter. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, people watching just on YouTube finding it, feel free to make comments, uh, room for improvements, all of that nature. Be nice, because I'll probably delete your comments anyway. Talk to you soon.